Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Depends on when you're watching this lecture. And this lecture, this is the third one for 216. Today I'm going to talk about list, iterator, ADTs, trees, vectors. I'll start off with vectors. Uh, we'll see how far we get. Um, you know, uh, it's pretty involved um, lecture. Uh, I'm going to try to cover as many examples as I can. Um, but realize that uh, uh, it's quite a bit to cover. Um, now, before I jump into vectors, what are we trying to do here? We are looking for a container, a holder, a placeholder, uh, a bucket, uh, not a bucket, but yeah, well, you can think of it as a bucket where you want to store some items. Now, if you want to store something, you need some kind of a data structure. You need a list. You need an array. Now, one of those containers is a vector. Now, think of it. You know, what's interesting is when I looked at the textbook, it's saying array-based implementation, and then it's talking about something else. I'm like, what? So, vector, the way I know it, the way I use it, the way it's been used, the way you're going to be using it, is via standard template library. It's included with the C++ library, um, comes to you for free, so you can use it. What the book was really trying to get at is when it's saying an array-based implementation, you think of, think of a vector, and behind the scenes, it's an array. It's an array, a container of anything you want it to be. Now, it can be a, a container of integers, double, float, even classes, right? So you could have... Uh, well, object, right? Uh, instance of classes or objects. So you'll have objects in there, whatever you want them to be. So it's a generic container of a list of elements that you want it to be. Now, the way behind the scene it works is you get an array. So think of it as, as an array. Once you reach the, the limit, the max for the array, it's going to double its size um, dynamically behind the scenes. So vector gives you that flexibility. You don't really have to worry about the size. You can keep adding to it. Um, although there is a... Uh, we'll talk about the functions that's in the vector. But anyways, I hope the concept is clear. Okay, vectors included part of the library. You include a library and you get all the functions along with it. The way you use it, well, that's what we are here to talk about. Is So a vector has a bunch of methods. Not limited to, but I mean, the, uh, these are the main ones. Add elements, access elements change elements, remove elements, move elements, you get the point, right? Adding deletion, uh, simple operation. Um, let's jump into some examples right away. Um, I hope I don't lose all my examples because I... Uh, okay, let me just rewrite the example and then I'll come back. Okay, <clears throat> I typed all of those up again and now I'm back. You know, I try to type up all the examples ahead of time because one of the things I realize is, um, is as I'm typing, is a loud noise. I mean, it's just irritating to the ear. Um, as it is, the sound quality isn't the greatest, so I try to speak loudly and not type as much. Um, I, I, I remember is when I started teaching online, I had one lecture where I was typing. Um, so I was typing these live examples, changing them, editing them on the fly. Um, I thought it was really helpful, but you know, when I listen to it myself, I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. Uh, so that's the reason I go behind the scenes and I type it up. So coming back, uh, vector. Okay. We talked about what a vector is. Why is the, what's the use of it? Could be an exam question. Um, so the way you go about using it first and foremost, you need to include the vector library. And the way you initialize a vector, the vector, the keyword vector, and then in these uh, braces, you have the type. You can have a class in there as well, class name, which is completely fine. And then vector one is the name of the, the vector. In this case, it's a vector of integers, uh, uh, just numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then, uh, there's two kind of initialization for the vector. One is this one, the first one that I tend to use. And then the second one is, instead of the equal to, you initialize it in parentheses right away as soon as you declare it. Um, I, I should say, and then there's a third one. Um, 
these two types of uh, braces that you see here, they're both valid, uh, right, when you initialize. Um, actually, most of the time what's going to happen is you're going to initialize it, but you're going to end up changing it. <laughs> you might initialize it to nothing or empty and null and then end up changing it. So look at this, ranged loop, okay? Now this is a, uh, how do I explain this? Um, you know, when I came across this, this kind of representation um, was a little confusing, but just know that this representation exists, okay? Uh, and let me run it for you. Did I miss it? I'll do it. That's what I was missing. Now you see the two vector. I could, you could do the same, and I'll put the third vector as well. But just know these. This way of iterating through the vector and outputting exists. But the way that I'm going to show you a simpler method that I end up using um, for a, that I still continue to use up till this day. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it, Vector is my favorite container. I use it a lot. Okay, so key points, including of the library, declaration, okay, uh, outputting, uh, don't worry too much about it right now. We'll get into it more. Uh, the second example right here. A second example illustrates a way um, to add values uh, to the vector. You see over there, um, I declared it straightforward, uh, not a problem. Uh, it's an initial vector, I say. Okay, so I go through the vector, and I'll put the elements in it. And then when I add more to it, I add six and I add seven, then I'll put the updated vector. Now let's see what happens. I'll run it. Okay, it's got six and seven. Now push back, meaning at the end of it, you're pushing these elements, right? So the, so it's, uh, what is it? Is it FIFO or, you know, first in, first out or last in, first out? Think about it. Um, maybe I'll ask you this as a exam question. Right, um, and and you know, as always, try out these examples yourself. First, you just include the library. The first thing you're going to do, just include the library and compile it and see what happens. If it compiles fine, that's great. If not, see where is the syntax. Or, and then the second thing you do is declare a vector, see if that works. And then you try to add elements to it and then output it. Uh, that's probably the first example you walk through. Now, let's talk about indexing uh, in a vector. You're like, what? Yes, you can index. Kind of works like an index. Which is very similar to the array, right? And that's why I said behind the scenes, it's a, it's a, a dynamic sized uh, array uh, that you're working with. So you've got uh, uh, a vector that you declared, you added five elements to it. Uh, element, now keep in mind, this is also zero based, right? So the indexing starts at zero and is going to go to whatever the uh, final size is minus one. So in this case, it's five. So the last element is going to be at four. And that's why you see five printed here. Uh, the first element at index zero is one, right? Which is this one right here. At two, which is zero, one, two, which is three. Right. You see three printed right here, and then at index four, uh, you see the uh, five. Okay, so with me so far, hopefully you guys are. Uh, then another way um, uh, to get to the element, to index the element, but this time we're also going to change it. Right? Last time we we're just accessing it, we're outputting it. So how do you go about doing it? Uh, and like I said, up until now, don't worry too much about outputting because uh, this way of outputting is 
to say the least, slightly confusing. Very confusing, if, if you ask me, because I, I wasn't able to get it uh, the first time that I was going through this. So, once again, I've got my a vector of five elements in there. I say what's the initial element, right? And then I access um, at index one, and then I access at index four. But I not only do I access it, what do I do with it? I actually change it. So what? So what should happen? Initially, it should say one, two, three, four, five. What's at one? So it should say one nine, and then the last element, which is here, it should change it to seven. Right? So I change five to seven, and then the second element to nine. So this is all about accessing elements. <clears throat> Next up, yet another example. Uh, now this time uh, is deleting it from the back, okay? Push back, pop back, you're seeing the pattern, right? So you know what kind of, so is it stack or cube, what kind of implementation it is. So in here, I've got a, <coughs> excuse me, in here, I've got a initial vector, two, three, five, and seven, okay? And then I say, pop back, okay? So I, I do it once, so I should have deleted one. Now, what do you think is going to happen? If, is it going to pop element seven or two? Which one, what's the back side of it? Now, if you said seven, you are correct at the back. It adds it at the back and deletes it at the back, okay? So push back, pop back. Those are the two ways that you can um, add or delete elements from the vector. Now, there's another way. Uh, I don't, you know, there's another way that comes to my mind. It's not intuitive, uh, but there, there is, you know, think about how you would go about uh, deleting elements without pushback or popback, if you had to. Okay, so now we are going to get to iterator. Now, iterator is going to help you access the element, right? And it's also going to help you to um, uh, display, output the element. So iterator, think of it as a pointer, access it, like an accessor. So it's a pointer to something. And you say vector iterator, I-T-E-R, okay? Uh, and you start off at the beginning. So the iterator started off at the beginning, right? Straightforward. And then num at zero equals iterator, because you started off at the beginning. So what should happen? It should be the first element, right? Um, and then you say begin plus two, okay? And then you say iterator n minus one. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the beginning is the first element, but n is one element after. What do I mean by that? Let me just go ahead and run the program. Uh, you know, then have it. And I'll make it slightly more pretty. Right. So now if I were to do this. It, it shows up at zero. It could be a large number or whatever. It could be jump. But keep this in mind. And is the, the very... Uh, last element plus one so it's a memory location could be garbage in this case uh, we're zero so if you want to access the last element you have to do minus one right and that's how you iterate through the um, through the array did I lose that as okay there's one more example uh, I'll come, come to it okay now let's jump into you know uh, before I talk about array list one of the things that I I realized was I tend to lean more towards C++ its examples and its uh, um, its implementation now I don't know if any one of you is actually using the Java version of it but I'll continue down this path and if you 
um, if you feel that I gotta go, you know, one thing I could do, I could do some C++ example and some Java examples to make things easier. If, um, or I can stick to C++. Most of the people that I interacted with, I know from the class, are using C++. So let me know otherwise uh, how you feel because if you don't, I might just continue down this path. <laughs> And now that I think about it, what I should have done is I have chose should have chosen the C++ book and, 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 st and stuck with it. Uh, so it's easier. Um, okay, so nonetheless, array list is a concept in, uh, in Java. So it's, <clears throat> it's basically a list in Java. Um, so it's easier to understand. Uh, but, you know, when we talk about C++ and list, uh, the way it's implemented, it's a doubly linked list, and uh, we did talk about the, you know, single linked list and the doubly linked list, circular linked list, etc. So you guys are familiar with it. Um, <coughs> <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Although I should say that uh, when I think of a list. Uh, I think of a list in terms of an array, an indexed array. Uh, but it shouldn't matter to you how it's implemented behind the scenes, right? As long as you can use it. Okay, so now um, let's move on uh, to something uh, both Java and C++ have is this concept of iterator. We might have touched on this before. But iterator is nothing more than just a pointer. Um, so you, you can see this <clears throat> picture right here, right? So you've got these elements, array elements, linked list element, and you've got uh, the element at zero index. So you've got four elements in there, right? And they go from index zero to three. And iterator at begin points to the first element, and then iterator at end points to one element after the last one, okay? So, this is the key. Um, and, the, and, the, and this key, th th this is really key piece of information, right? Because you might think the iterator at end is the points of the last element, but it's one after it. So if you're trying to access um, the, you know, the iterator at end, you're gonna run into issues. So think of it as a pointer to an address in the memory, okay? Let me uh, walk you through some examples. Oh, well, before I do, well, how do you go, uh, go ahead, how do you go ahead and uh, declare an iterator, right? So you create a, I'm gonna use vector as an example. So in order to create a vector iterator, you say vector int, and then the, you know, iterator, and then the name of the iterator. So this right here, vector underscore itr is the uh, name of the iterator and it's a vector int okay these you cannot combine so you you have a you have an int iterator right so you cannot use it on a double and then vice versa so the type is really important um and then this is a map iterator we're not going to get into it map is another uh, container uh, that you guys aren't familiar with yet, but just so you know, that's how you define it. Um, okay, so now that you've seen this, um, I've got a vector of strings. Okay, it's got Python, C++, Java, in it. and vector string iterator itr. Okay, so I've de declared a vector of strings. Uh, itr is the name and then I start from begin all the way to end and then I increment by one and then I say pointer at itr and then when I run this what do you think is going to happen python c++ java alright now if I had a vector of, and remember I said the type is really important it gave me an error so you cannot have an iterator type of int, and you're trying to go to a um, uh, use that int iterator on a string vector. Um, 
let's 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 look at this, right? Um, you're gonna see these operands for iterator, or you can play around with a bunch of examples. Uh, now that you know a little bit about the iterator, so if you put a star or asterisk before the iterator, it's gonna return the element that's said that. So if I, if you do iterator add m, it returns a member value m of the object pointed by the iterator, and is equivalent to dot m right whatever you if you get a method in there uh, that's where that's when you use it plus plus move to the next position minus minus decrements it by one equals to not equals to this is assignment right I iterator is equal to iterator one right if you're in the two equals to they what what they what that means is you're actually um, you're comparing, right? But if one equals two, you're actually assigning it. There is a well, actually, no, there is one more thing, though. and this isn't meant to confuse you. It might come out as confusing. You know, when I was writing this up, I'm like, oh. This is definitely going to confuse these guys, but for the sake of theory and knowledge, knowing that it's out there, uh, I'll go ahead and use it. Uh, so the C++ template library provides five types of iterators. Input, output, forward, bidirectional, random access. You might use it in some way, but I tend to use just the forward iterator. I don't really use the input one, I haven't used that. Right. Uh, but just so you know, they're out there. Um, I'm not gonna quiz you on the exam. Maybe I might ask you uh, how many types of iterators are there in Java or in C++ or in both. Uh, but oh yeah, one thing I, I ought to mention is when I'll when I'll prepare the question question for exam. Hopefully by then, I will find out that there's no nobody using the Java book. Uh, but if they are, then I'll have to prepare the exam in such a way that uh, I. I ask you questions that's common to both. Um, now here is an iterator and then you decide what kind of iterator it is. It is uh, forward or bi-directional. So I have a list, okay, so I've got a list of numbers, integers, right, one, two, three, four, five. And then I've got an iterator that starts at begin. And then I say while iterator is not equal to num.end, what do you think I'm going to do? Right? I'm going to output at iterator and then increment the iterator. And then moving backward. If it's so, we move forward all the way. Um, let's see where do we start. You start off with begin, and we're at end, right? Now, if you start decrementing, it's going to start. Uh, what is it going to do? Let's go ahead and run it. You'll see. Right, moving forward, moving backward. So this, I mean, in and of itself was uh, what was it? This was a bidirectional iterator, right? So, because right, we are able to move forward and move backward so that's how you declare and, and watch this right did it is there a difference in the way you declare an, an iterator make you know having it bi-directional uh, or forward only no right there's no it's the way you use it that made it bi-directional so I think I'll stop here uh, because there's all this overlap uh, or lack of overlap between Java and uh, and C++ a book I was looking at it for one of the uh, for one it mentioned sequence for the other one there was bubble sort mentioned uh, but uh, I'll see uh, this might be a shorter lecture but that's fine I'll stop right here
um, and then I will see you guys or talk to you in the, um, in the next lecture.